Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I also want to wish an early Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and families that will be celebrating tomorrow. That means those who actually are moms or have their moms, and then those who figuratively serve as uh, mothers to uh, many, godmothers, so many others. We celebrate all of you today with a special early message to my mom, who's in New York City, and I spoke to her on the way in as well. So she's staying safe, and that's what we're all planning on doing for Mother's Day this week. And as I was saying yesterday, this has been an enormously challenging time for all of us. Hopefully, people can find some normalcy and joy in having a phone call with family or in connecting with family remotely in some other creative way this weekend. That's the way we can all serve to keep each other safe, especially the mothers and motherly figures in our lives. In terms of the data updates, we have 210 new cases. There are 290 people, 292 people currently hospitalized. Of these people, 77 are currently in the intensive care unit, and 56 are currently on a ventilator. We sadly have 19 additional COVID-19 associated fatalities to report. These people ranged in age from their 60s to their 90s. There were four people in their 60s, four people in their 70s, five people in their 80s, and six people in their 90s. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families of those precious Rhode Islanders whom we have lost. With the holiday tomorrow, I want to take an extra moment to reiterate some of the messages that I've shared today and yesterday. Nursing homes and assisted living facilities are not accepting visitors this weekend or on any other day during this time. We talk a lot about nursing homes during these press conferences, but it's important that people understand that the same restrictions on visitation apply in assisted living facilities as well. If there is an older adult in your life who does not live in a congregate living setting, we're also strongly urging you to not pay them a visit this weekend as well. When in doubt, stay home and pick up the phone. This is not the time and not the weekend to be getting together. We know how challenging this is. We're only taking this approach because it is in the best interest of the health and safety of individuals and of our community as a whole. We are continuing to explore ways to help residents and families connect creatively. Around Easter and Passover time, we were encouraging people to not send flowers and packages to their loved ones in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. As we move in the direction of very slowly loosening some of our restrictions, we are working with nursing homes and assisted living facilities to allow things like packages and flowers to be sent to residents. This will be done with some very specific safety measures in place. For example, packages that get sent would need to be held by administrators for a period of 24 hours. That time period is based on some preliminary science on how long the virus can remain on a substance like cardboard. I just want to reiterate that you should not be bringing packages to nursing homes and assisted livings yourself this weekend. You should not be going at all. That means don't even go to the window, please. Your presence there in any way makes things much more confusing and challenging for everyone. The staff and administrators at nursing homes and assisted living facilities are doing their best. We really need families to be supporting them right now as they are supporting your family members. We all know that congregate living settings have been challenging environments when it comes to COVID-19 in Rhode Island and across the country. 
But the difficult scenarios that have played out in Rhode Island facilities are in no way the fault of those facilities. To help really illustrate this point, we at the Rhode Island Department of Health have had a very strict infection control program in place for a long time now. That includes the masking of all of our employees and checkpoints at all entrances where people are asked about any symptoms they may have. And yet, we have had cases of COVID-19 within our Rhode Island Department of Health family this week. This is because people can be positive for COVID-19, as we're learning, and not have any symptoms at all. That's what's making this virus so challenging. After one staff person got a positive test result just a day or two ago, we coordinated some testing for staff. We found out late yesterday that an additional six people were positive. All of these people are at home isolating and their contacts are self-quarantining. Out of an abundance of caution, we are having a thorough environmental cleaning done of the entire Cannon Building today, which is the larger of our two buildings at the Rhode Island Department of Health. I want to be clear and really acknowledge the fact that this is not in any way interrupting our COVID-19 response. We have done extensive planning and have worked closely with the state's IT department leadership. And I really want to thank BJ Kumar, Sharag Patel, Bob Childs, and the entire IT team that have done an, an, an amazing job to ensure that people are able to continue working remotely and even to accelerate the process that we have been preparing for. We've been encouraging offices to use technology to allow business to continue as usual with people working from home. If you can work remotely, you should continue to do that during this phase. We at the Department of Health are just like any other office-based organization in that regard. I did want to make one last note. We had said that our beloved Dr. McDonald was going to be joining the governor today, and I'm here. Dr. McDonald was one of the people at the department who was tested. His test result is uh, negative. It came back just a short while ago. But because of what I've been sharing about our testing, um, we know that a result done on a person without symptoms is less reliable. So. We will continue to ensure that all of our staff are wearing masks, that we're screening for symptoms, and doing the important work that we're asking everyone throughout the state to be able to do. So I'm happy to report that he and all of our team will continue forward with being able to provide the excellent updates that I'm able to share today.